Uh, let me um, turn now to, I think, another uh, important tool that's produced by one of my colleagues for helping you with language. Uh, I, I'm going to try uh, 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 and switch to um, using uh, the internet. What my colleague has developed um, is a tool for exploring language in a visual way. It's really a, what I would call a vis visual thesaurus, and it's uh, the website is wordsit.com. Uh, and what you can do is you can paste into this uh, text, maybe if I can find my cursor, which is the missing bit at the moment. Here we are. Uh, now, I'm going to paste into that, hopefully, the text uh, that <coughs> I showed you earlier on about why the sky is blue. Okay, uh, but it doesn't seem to want to do it. Try another go. I might have lost it, I'm afraid to say. Sorry about that. Okay. So I'm just going to type in, why is the sky blue? You can basically type in a uh, lot blue. And I'm going to type in a few key words, I'm afraid. A wavelength. Nasty words. Okay. Uh, radi oops. Wavelength. Radiation. Uh, spectrum. Okay. A little bit more. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, and I'm going to ask it to sift those words. And you can do this for whole blocks of text, okay, in that sense. Uh, and what it does uh, uh, is it produces a list of the words, as you can see those, and it, it produces a visual thesaurus. If I click science, okay, hopefully, it will pick out the words that are scientific, so that it alerts you as a teacher to which ones are particularly problematic. Uh, it also, what it will do is, there's a thing called AWL, which stands for Academic Word Lists. Uh, this is a list of uh, 550 words produced by a linguist in New Zealand of words that are commonly used in academic language. Uh, so if you click that, okay, it will produce, a, and there, there are none, actually, okay, in, in, in that sense. Okay. Uh, but it, it will pick, visible was one of them in the previous piece when I got it. So it picks these words out. What it does as well, which I think in, in this sense is uh, useful, is it produces a kind of visual thesaurus of the words, okay? In this case, it's sky, which you can't see, but it's relating to flip, pitch, toss. And it shows you the connections to other words in a visual way. Okay. What it also does is it produces lots of pictures okay. to help you imagine this particular word, which it does by searching <laughs> the internet. And then down the bottom as well, okay, what it does also finds videos related to that particular concept. So it's a kind of contemporary way, using the resources of the internet, of exploring the meaning of language uh, and helping students to build a picture. And it also helps you as a teacher, because if you're desperate for a kind of visualization of, well, what, is there a good thing way of representing the spectrum to them? You can quickly go to this and find some kind of diagram or picture that will help you to do that, or even a video which also illustrates the concept. So www.wordsift.com, do try it out, and do think, it's, it's very new, it's only developed it in the last six months, and do think about how you might use it. Anyway, going back to where I was, okay, uh, 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 what that, uh, actually, this is, if you put in a lot of text, this is what you get, it shows you the particularly word, words that are used a lot in that sense. And it shows, uh, uh, and these is showing up the scientific words in that sense, and there's the visual thesaurus uh, in that kind of way, with the pictures beside it of what is meant by atmosphere. Well, I think I've gone on for long enough, and I, I want to really finish on uh, a cautionary note. Uh, and this is a particular position that I occupy in that sense, uh, and I hope it's become clear in the talk that I've been offering. Which is, there is a kind of view that says scientific language is complex. The job of the science teacher, the job of the science communicator is to simplify it. That is true. Okay? If we want to communicate ideas, we always have to work on resource, and think, uh, draw on resources to think of ways of representing them. But if you do that, okay, okay, what you're presenting to students is not the same thing as the original. 
And technical language, and scientific language, has evolved. Okay, this is very much a what we call a functional linguistic perspective in order to communicate meaning. Okay, and as soon as you change it, details get lost and the meaning is not so clear. And those major scientific genres of report, explanation and experiment have all evolved as texts which represent the way in which the scientists think. And if you want people to give access to science, you have to give them access to that particular language because the functionality of those genres is something, not that somebody arbitrarily decided, but they have been decided upon the community because they work. Okay? This is something which has gradually come to be in that kind of way. And what our responsibility is, is to devise ways of providing access to that particular technology. And I hope what I've tried to do this morning is to share with you a very limited set of ways. You're obviously going to do more in the workshops okay, about how you can help students to engage with scientific language. Um, obviously, as I said at the beginning, uh, if you want to, uh, there is a book uh, which has some ways, and not all the ways uh, uh, that I've talked about in it. But I hope I've given you some insights into why I think it's important and the ways in which you can help uh, in the, your own teaching of science. Thank you very much for listening.